what are my four horsemen now? Um, these days I try to avoid trading companies, period. Why? Four letters. T-S-L-A. You guys probably know why. <laughs> Reason I try to avoid companies is because they are companies. I can't avoid the pitfalls of that. For example, bad earnings, bad pre-announcements, fad stocks, bubble stocks, death of a CEO, or worse yet, accounting issues. I have found four stocks that I'm very comfortable with, and they are not companies. You probably know what they are already. UPRO, the triple long ETF for S&P, SPXU, the triple short ETF for S&P, TQQQ, the triple long ETF for NASDAQ 100, and SQQQ, the triple short ETF for NASDAQ 100. If you don't know what these are, they are triple leverage ETFs that are the entire basket of those big indices. Basically, say S&P rallies 1% one day, that very day, UPRO would instead rally 3%, a triple parallel to the S&P. Now, how great is that? You won't have those days where S&P would rally 2% and your stock is down 1%, Tesla, and you're angrily wondering out, out loud why your stupid company stock is down during a huge update. That's happened a lot to me, and trading triple ETFs, you can avoid that stupid crap. You get the beta and leverage of a serious tech momentum stock, and an easy, easy package to trade. S&P goes up 1%, you're up 3%. As simple as that, and as powerful as that. One big question right now after all is said is this. Can this technique be applied to shorting inversely? Yes, it can. But keep in mind the overall market trend must be clearly down. Trying to short C waves or downside breaks is very difficult in bull markets where we are now. It can be tempting to do, and every time I've tempted a good 40% of the time, I'm wrong. Or some stupid random spike hits me and I cover. Trying to use this technique to go for 5 or 10 S&P points is hardly worth doing. This scalp method is very dangerous and very stupid. Yet, there are people who would like to try to short five ways up or one, two, three down. One, two, three down can work, but at the 80% clip that you're used to seeing on the long side, no. It's not even worth the effort. And up to half the time, you'll see some big random spike that will squeeze you, and in no time, you'll be one of those perm bears that have lost their money. My record is pretty bad at doing it, so why not just avoid it altogether? That's what I try to do. But if it's a confirmed bear market, what do I typically do in a bearish wave? I wait patiently, basically. I wait until I see that wave 2, wave 3 pattern break set up to the upside before I'd reinitiate a position. But what if the bearish wave is turning into a downward third wave? This is when I'd react. If there's a clear cut wave 1 down, wave 2 zigzag up that finds resistance at 0.618 retracement, followed by a break below the intraday low or wave 1, I'd go short, but never during the course of the day. I'd only do it at the big guy decision time frame, right at 305. When there's a clear cut inverse pattern break wave 3 to the downside, I'd react to it, only if the bearish wave has lasted 3 to 4 days minimum, or just intraday for a day trade at most. As you guys should know, bullish waves are more frequent than bearish waves. Well, maybe not from late 2007 to early 2009, but in the past few years, since the 2009 bottom, bullish moves are more frequent. An alternate strategy would be to buy bearish ETFs like SQQQ, SPXU, or FAZ, 
and go for the big downward wave three move. My history of shorting isn't that good, but I'm right maybe 60% of the time versus 80% of the time trading on the long side, but I'm working on improving that. I think it's the mental aspect of it. I really despise the act of shorting because it's anti-American on my soapbox. About stops. You may see on my website that I place a stop to buy or stop to sell. I place them on very key levels. So a 0.786 breakout would occur intraday after a zigzag, which is the 80% trade setup. A stop to buy is an order that would fill should the stock or ETF surpass that level. If I place a stop to buy at say 85.85 on UPRO and it's 85.01, when it rises to that level, it will automatically fill to the upside. The best thing about placing stops is the fact that you could just get lunch for an hour or two, come back, and see that your order has been filled with a huge amount of new money in there. You don't have to sit there all day trying to place quick market orders and try to trade like a complete crackhead. I'm a swing trader by style, so expect these trades to last between 2-5 to five days and see 6-8 to eight stopped buys the trigger on average over the course of the month. Better yet, out of those six to eight trades, based on my trading history, one will be a loss and not that bad because I also place stop to sell at exact Fibonacci levels. I do not automatically place a stop to sell after filling a buy order. By doing this, you're basically chickening out and not relying on Elliott Wave. I used to do this, and basically, what would happen frequently should a trade go down as opposed to up on the trigger is this. I buy, say, at 98, and it automatically drops on me, say, 2 points to 96. But it drops on a zigzag formation, or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 down. I could see that formation developing, and if I had to stop to sell it, would have triggered. I would have taken my loss at 96 and moved on, but this is not how I work. I have a very, very iron gut, not because of instinct, but because of the science of Elliott Wave, or the art of Elliott Wave. I would have seen that it dropped 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 down to 96, See the 4 up and 5 down at 0.382, recognize the 5th wave Fibonacci level, and boom, it reverses not only above 98, what I paid, but 102 or higher. Keep in mind that not every time an order fills, there's an automatic spike in Woohoo! Everybody makes money. I've seen stop to buy orders that trigger and kaboom down. But like I said, based on my experience with LA Wave trading, I would prefer to recognize what corrective formation is forming first before chickening out and selling. What I'm telling you guys about stops is pretty important because what I said in the past two paragraphs is exactly what I do should that ETF I bought drop immediately after I buy it. But, if I could clearly see a much bigger and more dangerous formation for me, and I could identify it as a mistake, I will place a stop to sell based on downside Fibonacci support, say a downside 0.618 Fibonacci support break. You will also notice that I will choose Fibonacci patterns to trigger these stops on. 1. 
0.618 of the entire downside correction. Should the overall market have a pretty obvious upside gap and rally, I want to get in quick. 2. 0.786 of the entire downside correction. I do this 80% of the time because at 0.786 Fibonacci level, not only do you avoid the dreaded 2 up and 3 down at 0.618, but you also have peace of mind knowing that 0.786 is very, very close to 1.00, and to see 0.786 touch and reverse to the downside is very rare. 3. 1.00 of the entire downside correction. I will place a stop at 1.00 for this basic reason. I don't trust the market like I should, but I want to make money. 1.00 breakouts are almost as frequent as 0.76 breakouts, trades to me, simply because it gives you a very high probability of a third wave and avoiding 0.618 and drop or 0.76 and drop. 4. One big thing about my trading as well is this. I won't place these stops at 0.618 or at 0.786 or 1.00. I will place a stop to buy UPRO or TQQQ slightly above the trigger price. So say UPRO's 0.786 breakout is 86.77. I will tack on another 10 to 15 cents on that order so I would actually want to fill at 86.87 to 86.92 instead. That would be a stop that triggers on an actual breakout as opposed to hitting 0.618 and 0.786 and getting your ass handed to you on a downward three. Here's a quick summary. The pattern generally occurs and is very successful in bull markets or clear upward impulses. You basically wait for wave 1 to complete and correct in a deep 2. Usually short term, it will be in the formation of an ABC zigzag where A equals C and B equals 0.618 of the downward A. The deep 2 cannot exceed 0.618 support. Same applies for cup and handles. After the formation completes, you try to make an entry of 0.76 of the entire downward zigzag or 1.00 to be conservative. Earlier entry could be 0.618, but that could be B up before C down. Thank you for purchasing this video from WaveGenius.com. And I hope this will help you master the art of Elliott Wave trading. I would strongly suggest in the future purchasing all the discs together as one big package so you can find every angle and every inflection point to make your trades 80 to 90% profitable as well. Keep in mind, purchasing all the videos together will save you a lot of money in the long run because I know that one will not be enough for you. Also, I urge you to try out the live WaveGenius.com membership which provides a huge amount of incredibly accurate LU wave analysis all day from 9 to 4 p.m. every trading day. This is Ted Aguhab, the Wave Genius, signing off. Thanks.